Hey guys, welcome back to Insight Tennis Tour Stroke Series. My name is Rick Oldroyd. Today's video is going to be on the backhand slice and we talked a little bit about this in a, a previous video, um, video number one. This is actually going to be uh, video number two in this series that we're doing on the backhand slice. But a couple of things that I want to talk about today, uh, there's a couple of positions that the the best players in the world uh, get into that are very, very subtle. If somebody doesn't tell you about them, you probably will not see them. And they are the absolute, uh, an absolute necessity, if you will, to hitting uh, a knifing, driving backhand slice. Um, there's too much uh, information, in my opinion, out there talking about, you know, coming in and keeping my racket face in the same position and just going out through the ball. You can absolutely hit the ball over the net like that, but it is absolutely not what the best players in the world do. And so we want to talk a little bit about uh, some things that you can emulate uh, in the backhand slice that the best players in the world all use. And this is why their slice has so much you know, penetration, for example, like a, a Dimitrov or a Federer. Uh, you'll notice that the ball stays really, really low and it's got a lot of pace to it. It's not just a floating shot. So how does he accomplish that? Um, that's what we're going to talk about today. So first of all, the universal grip on the backhand slice is the continental grip. Um, again, there are some different variations, but the easiest way to find that is bevel number one here, bevel number two, index knuckle. If you put your index knuckle on bevel number two and the pad of your hand essentially on bevel number two, going to look like that from the top. That's pretty darn close. Um, again, there are some variations. One of the first things that we want to talk about uh, that are keys to a good backhand slice is a really, really good shoulder turn. I, I see a lot of times where players will only get to about right here. Now you can still hit a slice from that position. There's no question about it, but it isn't nearly as effective and it won't have as much on it. So that's one of the first keys is we want to make sure, actually I'll show you uh, from the uh, front of the camera here, that when we take the racket back, we take that racket back to about this position initially, but then as the ball is coming off the ground, we're really going to be taking that racket back. Now, I advocate rotating the hand forward like Federer does, but if you just take it back this way, that's fine as well. But the key, key thing is you've got to make sure that you get into a really good shoulder turn position here. As I start to step into the ball, you can see my racket is back quite a ways and I've got a really good shoulder turn. The other thing I want to emphasize is that, that I take my racket back as a product of the momentum of the swing. It's all one smooth motion. Let me show you what I mean by that. So when I take it back, I take it back to about here initially. But then as the ball is, is coming and I'm ready to step into the ball, I'm going to bring it back and I'm going to rotate and I'm going to come back down into the ball and through the shot. Okay, That should all be one smooth transition. So that's the first thing. Really great shoulder turn. Very, very important regardless of how you take the racket back. Make sure you get into a really good coiled shoulder turn position. That's number one. Number two is the second position that is absolutely critical and I'm going to show you this from the side. When you take the racket back, if you rotate your racket this way like Federer does, that's totally fine. But as I come back and I get ready to start my swing down into the ball, I need to make sure that I, my racket gets to this position right here. And this is something that if you don't know about it or someone hasn't told you, absolutely probably won't see it because it, it happens so quickly and it's such a subtle thing. But it's the absolute key to that driving, knifing backhand slice. So if I get back to this position here, then I've got to make sure that I get to here so that now as I come down in the ball, this is the second position that you've got to get into. The third is as you can see, the racket is pointing up into the sky. My knuckles are up into the sky. That's exactly where I want to be at this stage right here, right? Now, 
The next thing that's critical is I've got to bring my racket back to contact. And in order to do that, I'm gonna have to slightly rotate my uh, racket head back into the ball, okay? And the reason why I have to do that is because my racket is open, okay? If I take my racket back like this and I get ready to step in, right? And I'm gonna come down now. Notice that my racket is open, okay? If I come back down into that ball, my racket face is gonna be about like this when I make contact. And that ball is gonna have nothing on it. It's gonna go high. You can hit a slice like that, but it's not what the best players in the world do, okay? So, once again, I've got this good shoulder turn. I take it back as a product of the swing as I'm ready to step in. Now, as I'm getting to this second position right here, now as I'm coming down, notice I'm driving from my shoulder here, coming down, I'm going to rotate my racket back to contact. Okay, watch again carefully. Down, rotation. Now that rotation is a huge power source. This is something that will take some timing to learn how to get this, but when you do, you're gonna pop your backhand slice probably like you never have before because this rotation, this move right here, where if this is the racket face coming down and rotating back to contact and then through, whether you finish high or whether you finish low like Federer does, that's entirely up to you depending on the type of shot that you're trying to hit. But the concept of getting my racket open like this so that as I come back down into the ball, I have to rotate back to contact. That rotation, as I time that, is a massive power source. So again, in review guys, this is something that you're gonna have to go out and work on. And it does take time to get it because the timing has to be right. But if you want to know how the best players in the world are hitting that slice and they're su such a knifing shot, penetrating deep into the court and then staying low, this is the absolute key. These two things right here. Obviously the good shoulder turn goes without saying, but the key position you've got to get into is this one right here. My racket has got to be in this position with my knuckles up, my racket head up, or racket face rather up. Okay, now from here, I'm gonna come into the ball now. I've got my good shoulder turn as I come down. If I don't do something with my racket face to square it back up, I'm gonna be open at contact. So I've gotta come down and make contact here. Okay, so here, here, there, okay? And then I can just go through that ball to finish. Now, whether I finish high or whether I finish low, it's the concepts are the same. So I'm gonna try and do this in slow motion so you can kind of see, but this is the key right here. Getting to here, then there, then there, okay? So right here, here, boom. And then obviously I'd stop in the racket right there. I would normally allow it to go a little bit farther like that, but that's the idea, guys. So go out and practice this. Uh, again, the key points are good shoulder turn, racket in this position right there, so that I, as I come down into the ball, I rotate my racket to contact. Let me demonstrate that one more time. So I'm here, good shoulder turn, ready to step in. Now I'm gonna come to this position, and now I'm coming down into the ball, and I'm gonna make contact with my racket face in about this position right here. Not that position, but that position. And then I can really come down and knife into that ball. Boom. And through that shot. Again, it will take great timing, but once you get it, you will be amazed at how you're going to hit that backhand slice. So guys, again, hopefully this will be helpful for you. Go out and work on it. If you have any questions or comments, leave any comments below um, in the comment section. And uh, check out the website at InsightTennis.com. Uh, email me directly at Rick at InsightTennis.com if you have any, any questions, if you'd like to uh, take lessons or clinics or any interest in those kinds of things, feel free to email me directly at Rick at InsightTennis.com. As always, guys, thank you so much for your time, and we'll see you next time out on the court.